Hey, what's going on guys? Crazy here. Welcome back to another Cyberpunk video and today we're gonna go over the biggest mistakes that I wish I avoided sooner in my playthrough, especially the first one. There is a ton of stuff that I did wrong, I wasted a ton of time and even more so, I completely skipped on a ton of stuff that could have actually made me way stronger, would have given me a ton more story options or it could have just given me some really amazing items that you can't get otherwise. So let's jump right into it and as always if you enjoyed this video at any point it would be super awesome if you left a like on it. Let's begin with the likely biggest mistake that you're doing right now and probably the one that you started in the beginning of the game without realizing that it sets you on a course towards failure and that is the fact that you are not planning your skills accordingly and you're not planning your skill tree distribution ahead of time because well, surprise, surprise, there is no easy way to respect your character in this game unless you start from the very beginning or um, roll back on your save files. So here is what you need to know. First of all, attributes, yes, these are set in stone. Once you pick them, you cannot change them. So things like the body, the cool, the reflexes, um, they are permanent and at the very least at the time of making this video, there is no known way to go ahead and reset these to further distribute them again. Um, at the same time, the perk points, which are actually the ones that you invest inside of these categories like the various passives and the other skills um, these can be indeed reset but at a really big cost which is going to be in the form of this um, tabula e rasa chip that you can get at any ripper dock but this one check this out it costs 100,000 eddies which is a fortune you can basically finish the main story completely and you might not even have nearly close to that let alone to um, afford a full on chip so what I recommend in this case is to pay attention to all of the skill trees, go into each one of them and see which one of these you think might work the best for you. And only then go ahead and invest points into them because otherwise you might just be wasting time. Now if you already did that, don't worry, you can't like fully ruin your character, it's just that it's not going to be super OP or anything. It's going to be okay but it's not going to be its best version. Moving on to the second big mistake, you might be wasting your money way too early, especially since there are a ton of money sinks in cyberpunk while at the same time the rate at which you generate money is not going to be as fast to compensate for that and also in part because the game presents you with a ton of opportunities very early on like really awesome vehicles legendary or upgrades that you think you might need but in reality you actually don't let's begin with the vehicles as you play the main story you're given more purchase options when it comes to cars and all that kind of stuff the problem is that these have a really high cost right off off the bat and it's better to just spend that money elsewhere. Even the most rundown kind of vehicle with a minimal speed increase is going to sell for over 10,000 Aries, so that's going to be quite a big investment and of course there are free vehicles that you get from the main story and also from the side content. I will cover all the free vehicles in a separate video so stay tuned for that. Another big money waste if you don't plan accordingly is going to be the cyberware installs. So you might think that you want to install maybe a green or a blue kind of upgrade without realizing that you're just setting yourself up for a big disappointment. The reason for that is because cyberware implants cost a lot even for the low quality ones and eventually as you progress through the story and do the side content you're going to get way better ones like epics or legendaries that you might want to replace but now you don't have enough money because well they basically are extremely expensive. So instead decide if the impact of the implant is worth the amount that you're spending like if you're spending thousands of eddies for just a marginal damage increase it's not going to be that great at the same time if you spend it on a functionality like double jump maybe that is worth it or maybe slow time that can also be worth it but again that's going to be really expensive and um, you can totally go through a minimalistic implant kind of playthrough and still fare really well and um, the final money sink and I'm not sure if it's gonna be bigger than the cyberware it definitely feels as such but buying legendary weapons weapons from merchants definitely seems like a complete waste. Many of these weapons can cost over 150,000 eddies and of course if you just play through the game you can get legendaries, epics, iconics from other means as I've also mentioned in one of the previous videos. Otherwise what you can do instead is to just buy the crafting recipes especially for the legendary guns which are much cheaper and this also means you can craft as many of these as you want as long as of course you have the crafting materials. Moving on to number 3 another big well mistake is going to be not using the upgrade slash crafting 
system. As I've said, instead of spending that money to buy weapons, go ahead and craft them. Luckily enough, in the early stages, crafting greens is really inexpensive. You can get a ton of these crafting mats, both from just looting corpses or stashes, as well as disassembling the guns that you already have. So in this case, this is probably going to be the best course of action. Even more so since the crafting items that you get are going to scale to your current level. So this means you never have to worry that you're going to be under geared or underpowered against the upcoming enemies. Moving on to number four, this is another bigger one that unfortunately I wished I kind of discovered earlier, but answer your damn phone what are you even waiting for like use your phone way more often to both call and message people especially so pay attention to the messaging bit because you can reply to many of these characters back with your own options so it is a whole mini game in itself but what's most important is that at least on a few occasions you can answer to certain characters through these messages and if you don't do that you can miss on some really amazing rewards like for example a free vehicle that you you might not even know you can get or for example a really spicy scene that you might want to go ahead and take part in because yes it is that spicy even more so when at the end of it you might get a really useful reward that you can use against enemies to slap them in the face if you get my meaning moving on to number five weapon modes let's talk a bit about them as well as the attachments because you might fall in another big trap that of course cyberpunk has set you and that is the fact that well yes weapons can be enhanced with all kinds of mods to increase damage, status effect, crit chance, and so on and so forth. But what you do need to know is that once you place a mod inside of a weapon, that mod is there to stay forever and you're likely not going to get it back. At the very least, not without getting the waste, not, want, not passive in the tech ability, which requires about 16 points to get. So that is a very steep investment. So if you don't want to do that, instead just make sure that you keep the higher quality mods for the better guns a bit later on so that you don't waste them. The green ones and maybe even the rare ones, yeah, you can waste them, but um, don't go in too deep. As far as the attachments, the good news is that, yes, you can take these down once you place them. So things like the scope silencers can totally be removed and even switched between your different weapons. But you can still lose them if you happen to disassemble a weapon that had that attachment installed on it. So whenever you're about to, for example, disassemble a weapon, try to go ahead and take down its attachment first unless you want to lose it. If it's green or rare quality, don't bother too much, but if it's higher quality, just try to like save on these as much as possible unless you want to waste more money. Now, speaking of money and getting items, we've talked about this in one of yesterday's video, but I want to expand a bit on that. So if you haven't done so already, definitely go ahead and take part in as many and CPD scan missions as you possibly can. You can see them with the blue markers on the screen and once you get over there, you're going to encounter one of the many types of NCPD encounters that you can find. But, well, of course, the ones that are the best, in my opinion, are going to be the Assault in Progress, which, well, are great because um, they are really fast and also give you some really great rewards. Or if you want something longer with a bigger payout, but um, also takes a bit more time to complete, um, you're going to want to go ahead and do Suspected Organized Crimes uh, that I've talked about yesterday. So both of these are amazing sources of high-quality items money and street cred. The higher the difficulty of the NCPD scan mission is, the better the rewards will be, to the point that you will get even epics, maybe even legendaries, but they also oftentimes unlock these iconic items that means you can go ahead and also craft their more potent versions later on in the game. So definitely go ahead and pay special attention to these. Moving on to 7, another big mistake, and even though this sounds counterintuitive and pretty easy to well understand, not exploring more and doing the side content is going to be a big mistake on your part if you're not doing as much of it as possible. Like for some reason, people and especially the big reviewers rushed through the main story and then complained that it is too short without realizing that they have just missed on a ton of content. And this goes everything from items, upgrades, skill points, money, vehicles, all the way to narratives that will unlock additional endings for your main story. So my recommendation here is to pay close attention 
option to the romance option and try to romance all of the romanceable characters in the game. They are usually easy to spot without spoiling anything, it's usually the ones that get introduced to you in the main story but then ask you to do a side job for them. More often than not this means that you can follow a complete quest chain for them and also get a chance to interact with them more which also opens up romanceable options. Of course there are other prerequisites in there too but we will talk about them in a different video. Finally the final point on the list is not saving often enough and yes um, I kind of fall in this category too but um, the game is pretty good at auto saving your progress though at various points you will want to make use of your saving options too like the manual saving is going to be there to um, well save you if I were to say so myself but um, here is the one situation I recommend using this the most and that is when interacting with gang leaders. Um, you kind of have two options when it comes to the gangs in the game you can either collaborate with them or go in a full out war against them especially against the leaders. So your option is here well do you enjoy that character enough to continue doing stories and missions and side narratives with that character or do you want to end him or her and take the loot that they might hold. In that case what I recommend is doing a save before you interact with them. Um, go ahead, try to kill them, see if you enjoy the items that they give. If you don't, roll back and now you can go in and behave as if nothing happened and be their best friends and whatnot. But anyway, this is it with today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.